One of the big reasons why uh, people are, are why modern society makes people depressed is because prehistoric humans lived in like tight knit communities of thirty to forty people, and that was all they would know for their entire lives. And now uh, we're depressed because society being so big makes us lonely. But also, I think because it makes it impossible to be the best at anything. Like because now because the whole world is connected. Like, if you're super talented at something, you get moved up like a never-ending pyramid of all-stars of all-stars of all-stars until eventually you get to the U.S. Olympic basketball team or the NASA, like, top scientist luncheon or, <laughs> or whatever they have. And you're surrounded by people that are better than you at your best thing. And I don't think people used to ever have to face that because in a population of 30 to 40, it'd be so easy to feel like a big shot. Like Everyone would be the best at something. The tall guy in the village would be like, I don't have to put up with people's shit. I'm 5'11". <laughs> and those uh, extremely rare uh, humans that actually are one in seven billion at something, they're not like us. You know, they're, they're freaks of nature. I was just reading this article about uh, the, the smartest uh, person in the world. The highest IQ that's ever been recorded is by a Korean astrophysicist named Kim Ung Young, who f is so smart he got famous as a baby because he said his first words when he was four months old. <laughs> and by the time he was six months old, he could hold a full conversation. Uh, it's a true story. Uh, my first thought is, even if they knew words, what would a six-month-old have to talk about? <laughs> like, so throwing stuff's pretty fun, right? <laughs> have you met this lady mom? She's made of food. <laughs> What's the deal with the dog? Why does he look so much different than everyone else? <laughs> also, that would be terrifying. A real live talking baby, if you didn't know ahead of time? <laughs> Could you imagine the first time his mom was like, who does mommy love? Whom? Ah! <laughs> I can't relate to what it's like to be a mom, but I feel like breastfeeding a talking person would be <laughs> horrifying. <laughs> it would be freaky. No, the right one. And if you, uh, if you keep reading about this guy's life, which I did, um, by, the, by the time he was uh, 18 months old, he started writing and performing poetry, which I'm sure was pretty incredible for people at the time. But in retrospect, I'm like, what a pretentious little baby. <laughs> he was already too good for prose. Also, could you imagine being the guy at the poetry open mic that has to follow the guy that's 18 months old? No matter how good you are, the audience will go home saying, yeah, I guess that second guy was good, but I didn't want to blow on his belly. The, uh, the part that bugs me is I bet he thought he was really good at poetry. Because <laughs> the audience is going to give you so much slack just for being a baby in the performing arts. <laughs> I feel like if he had done another performing art other than poetry, he would have embarrassed himself. <laughs> like, could you imagine if he had done something else? Like, if he had been a magician? <laughs> like, I will now make myself disappear. <laughs> Thank you. Guys, I think you may have just witnessed the record for longest comedy bit about a single baby that doesn't belong to the comedian on stage. <laughs> but yeah, his name is Kim Ung Young. Um, and then he grew up and uh, scored the highest IQ ever. So yeah, that's why it's impossible to, to be the best at anything because the true outliers in a population this big are, are basically superhuman. Uh, like, I'm trying to be an actor, right? I say trying to be, because so far it's only cost me money. But, 
Uh, my favorite actor is, and the, the actor who's won more uh, Best Actor Oscars than anyone else is Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, he uh, he was in a movie one time called The Boxer. Uh, where he trained for a year before the movie started filming. And by the end of it, his trainer claimed that Daniel had gotten so good at boxing that he could have been a professional boxer if he wanted to. He's not even athletic. He's just that good at acting. <laughs> He's good enough at acting that he can act good enough at boxing to beat a professional boxer. <laughs> could you imagine how embarrassing that would be for them? Like, so Johnsky... You really looked outmatched in the ring tonight with Daniel Day-Lewis. What do you think happened? Oh, man, I gave it my all in there. He was just so believable. <laughs> Every time he hit me, I thought, that's just how a boxer would do it. <laughs> that would be so emasculating. Maybe <laughs> Not only does this man do his own job better than I do mine, he does my job better while he's doing his. <laughs> They'd have to listen to Daniel in interviews going like, I don't just throw punches. I ask why. <laughs> am I trying to say, I hate you? Or am I trying to say, I hate that I need you? But here's the, uh, here's the frustrating part for me. I, I don't even think you can even necessarily say that being the best in the world at something is even worth it. Because to be that good at anything, you have to make so many sacrifices, it basically balances out the good parts. Like Daniel Day-Lewis was also in a movie called My Left Foot, uh, for which he uh, pretended to have cerebral palsy for six months of shooting and actually broke two ribs from being hunched over for so long. He also lived off the land in the wilderness by himself to get ready for six months to get ready for Last of the Mohicans. You can literally get this guy to do anything if you put him in a movie. <laughs> I feel like a movie producer could take advantage of him. Like, Daniel, I have a movie idea. Where you befriend a Hollywood movie producer that needs your kidney. <laughs> but also, I don't think you can say that uh, all the stuff that Daniel Day-Lewis did wasn't worth it either. I mean, he, he does stand alone as the most awarded film actor that's ever lived. You know, like, Michael Phelps used to spend 364 days a year in the pool. And now, he's horribly depressed because he never learned how to be a person. But how can, how can you say it wasn't worth it? He has 23 gold medals. <laughs> That's rarer than happiness. Thank you. Yeah. Bottom line is there's just an equal trade-off for anything you decide to do with your life. That's what I think. It, nobody's better or worse off than anybody. It's all a big zero-sum game. That's, uh, that's why I'm just trying to live my life at neutral. That... <laughs> Seems like the best way to do it. Um, been doing a little reading about neuroscience recently, ladies. Um, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Apparently the way uh, pain and pleasure work in the brain is if you have too much of one without the other, you become desensitized to it over time, uh, which is why people are still super depressed even though their lives are amazing. Uh, so... Like, for example, the, according to brain scans, the greatest experience that any human being could ever have, the most euphoric feeling on Earth, is black tar heroin. Because it releases all of your oxytocin, which is basically the chemical that makes you feel loved. Conversely, the worst experience that any person could ever have is getting stung by a box jellyfish. Because the way the toxins of the box jellyfish work is it hacks your nervous system and turns every single nerve in your body up to 100% pain. And that goes on for about 20 hours until your organs shut down from pain overload and you die. Um, so what I, of course, need to know <laughs> is what, what would happen to a person that took a bunch of heroin after getting stung by a box jellyfish? <laughs> 
they'd be on their deathbed and the paramedics would be like, how do you feel? And they'd be like, just sort of out of five. <laughs> I just kind of have that 2 p.m. feeling everywhere. I feel, like, I feel like if that happened to a person, they would automatically achieve enlightenment. They'd be like, I'm not good or bad. I just really, really am. And then, then they would die from being so overwhelmingly neutral. <laughs> Their last breath would be one of these. <laughs> 